the symbolism of theatre. We know our solar system was created in seven symbolic days and that it was rolled out as a spiral like a spider spins its web. Galaxies are rolled out in the same way. Like a Catherine wheel, but slower. But did you know that it is evolving spiritually and physically too, and expanding as a result, like a snail's shell? This plan for evolution and change is called The Great Work. T.S. Eliot from East Coker I said to my soul, Be still, and let the dark come upon you, which shall be the darkness of God, as in a theatre. The lights are extinguished for the scene to be changed with a hollow rumble of wings, with a movement of darkness on darkness, and we know that the hills and the trees, the distant panorama, and the bold and imposing facade are all being rolled away. The symbolism used to describe the plan as it is being played out is the theatre. We are all participants in this great play, every single one of us. We all have a destiny on each cycle of the wheel of life. Ah, Danielu, the way to the labyrinth. Is our destiny foreseen, foreseeable? We only have a vague sense of it, but when we reverse the march of time, and follow the unfolding course of our lives from old age back to childhood, a great many things begin to make sense and suddenly fit together. Chance is no longer a factor. Nothing happens by accident. Our spiritual destiny, the role each of us must play in the great comedy of the world, is independent of our emotional, sensual, even our intellectual lives. We often find ourselves struggling against our fate when it frightens us or seems too heavy a burden to bear. But there are times we must be totally open and surrender. For it is in those very actions that we most truly fulfill not only ourselves, but the humble role we have each been assigned in a world whose ultimate design we cannot know. in the audience, applauding or booing and hissing. Walter de la Mer from the Marionettes. Strange such a piece is free, while we spectators sit aghast at its agony, it's absorbed in it. Dark is the outer air, coldly the night draughts blow, mutely we stare and stare. The frenzied show. Some are even ferocious critics. But a great gulf separates those in the audience from those actually in the play. Walter Benjamin, Illuminations. The abyss which separates the players from the audience as it does the dead from the living. The abyss whose silence in a play heightens the sublimity, whose resonance in an opera heightens the intoxication. This abyss of all elements of the theatre, the one that bears the most indelible traces of its ritual origin.
Some of us may have very small walk-on parts lasting no time at all. So small, we may not even know we're in the play. Some may symbolically play musical instruments to accompany the players, or just dance. But many are key actors in the play, and they have to play a part and keep to the script. Anna Daniello from Gods of Love and Ecstasy Dharma is a word which means natural law. To conform to it is the only virtue. There is no other religion than that of calming, conforming to what one is by birth, by nature, by one's natural disposition. Each must play, as best he can, his assigned role in the great theatre of creation. Man's happiness and survival depend on it. The vast majority of people have what is called free will to applaud or boo and hiss as they please. But if you are on the stage and have a part to play, your freedom becomes much more restricted. Eventually, you're really just a puppet in the hands of the puppeteers. While hiding behind the mask of a personality you have been given for this scene. You can take your horoscope in your hand and pretend it is the part you've been given for a play. Obviously, in the theatre of life, there are good and indifferent actors. If you have to play Sagittarius the Archer, you can play the part well or not. No actor in the theatre is going to say to himself, Now I have school of the role of the Archer, I don't have anything more to do. The producer will do it all. That would be to make the mistake of thinking he was not an actor, but a marionette. He knows that the part has been played by giants at the stage before him. He studies the nuances they have brought to it. He examines it from all angles. Perhaps he has done some background reading. He considers how he can make it his own. He experiments. He rehearses. Should it be any different in real life? Everything in the chart can be raised to the level of an art form. The director and producer are invisible to the audience, as is the scriptwriter. They are not even in the theatre of life. But all the actors are visible, even though a curtain may separate them from the audience at the beginning and the end of the play. So the stage is really a halfway point between the audience and those intelligences who are really in control of everything. Alfred North Whitehead, Science and the Modern World. He's been named respectively Jehovah, Allah, Brahma, Father in Heaven, Order of Heaven, First Cause, Supreme Being. If this conception be adhered to, he is then the supreme author of the play. But the plot of the play itself is a secret to all but the scriptwriter, lest the players decide to improvise and ruin it. And neither the audience or the actors are likely to see the play through from beginning to end. Is the play different every time? Quite. The scriptwriter does use archetypal themes woven into different stories, but using different actors. He has a great liking, for example, for heroes, clowns, 
and fools. And it is said that occasionally he even sits in the stalls watching. Gerald William Bullitt from Maitre de Ballet On a gossamer thread of light that stretches from dark to dark over the void, we giddily jig to the mad music the master makes. From the green room he calls us forth, sensitive puppets, live automata, and with a gesture sets us jerkily dancing the tightrope. From a seat in the stalls of the cosmic theatre, silently he watches our antics. When we call to him, Master, Master, help, we are falling. Out of the darkness comes no word, only a chuckle.